nap stages, uh, this is going to be a little bit less philosophical as, as the other theories have been. And this is going to kind of just go through all the steps of the relationship and as the relationship again goes downhill. So to start, we have initiating. You know, Bob sees Jane for the first time, says, hi, hi. Initiating step usually lasts a couple, couple seconds, couple minutes at most. Get into experimenting. They start asking very basic small talk questions about themselves. You know, how's the weather? Good. How are you? So, what's your major? Oh, chemistry. What's yours? Biology. Oh, we both are in science. Have you taken this class? Yeah, it's still pretty safe topics. You may get into a little bit more personal, social level, but it's still going to be fairly safe. You're not on any sort of interpersonal level yet. And experimenting may last for quite a while. In fact, with some people, you may never get past experimenting. Intensifying is where you actually finally get to an interpersonal relationship with someone. So by the time you hit the intensifying stage with them, you spend a lot of time experimenting till you're able to predict their behavior on a psychological interpersonal level. That's the intensifying stage. When we get to integrating is really when you're a couple with that person. And it doesn't necessarily, if, if we're not talking about romantic relationships, we're still talking about a very close relationship where people would really view you as um, one wouldn't be without the other very often. So um, one of the areas that this has actually been applied to has been like in a work situation, like a work partner. And so you can think about if there's somebody that you're kind of always with at work and you know, maybe it's your boss, maybe you and your boss are the only members of a particular department, or maybe there's two of you that are co-owners of a business. Um, you're probably very much integrated because you think of yourselves as we. What are we going to do? You work very closely with that person instead of what am I going to do? So in the integration stage, again, you think of yourselves as a we. You're sort of a couple in a sense of not necessarily a romantic couple, but a couple in a sense that um, you do things as the two of you instead of constantly doing individual things together. And people expect to see both of you there. And they think of, when they think of, you know, your position at work, they think of both of you. And in a romantic situation, you know, it's not, hey, are you coming? It's, hey, are you guys coming? Are you two coming? And then finally we get to bonding where there's really a public commitment about that relationship. So in when it comes to a romantic relationship, we can think about that bonding stage as perhaps marriage. Um, Integrate, you know, where a lot of students will say, where does the marriage proposal come in? Because that is technically a public commitment. I mean, if you're, you're down on one knee and you make that commitment to say, I'm going to be with you forever, is that bonding or integrating? And I think I could probably see it either way, depending on how you justify the other steps. I think integrating could potentially be that marriage proposal, um, and then bonding would be the actual marriage because the marriage really makes it, you know, official. Um, but I could also see it the other way because I could see where, you know, getting down on one knee and, and that, that that would be a potential public commitment. So where does that fall? Like I said, it depends. There's I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong answer to that question. I think it depends on how you would interpret it and where does the relationship go after that, I guess is what I would more say. But as we know, um, not all relationships just end at bonding and everyone lives happily ever after, though that would be nice. So we look at the stages of relational disillusion. You know, say the, the, the couple had been married for, you know, several years and then differentiating, they start noticing things about each other like, you know, one, the, the, the husband, he always tends to leave the toilet seat up or um, never cleans up the mess. And the wife always leaves, say, her, her, um, her makeup case sitting out or the hair straightener leaves it plugged in and the husband always has to put it away. So that's in that relationship. In, in a work relationship, you kind of notice little things like, oh, it was bothering me so much when they didn't, you know, balance the checkbook in this way, or they forgot to write down something in the in the uh, the ledger. They bought something and they didn't bring a receipt in, so it didn't get those little things, and they really start to bother you. That's when you start to get into differentiating. Circumscribing and stagnating are very similar, meaning the communication changes, and you're talking about just very safe topics when we get to circumscribing. Because there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of conflict in the relationship, a lot of, perhaps, hostility. 
So when we get to circumscribing, the relationship just kind of is at a standstill. But the difference with circumscribing and stagnating, and again, so you can think of stagnating as a standstill too. The big difference between the two is in the circumscribing stage, no one else really knows anything is wrong. You're able to still act like a couple in public and no one knows that there's any really anything going on between the two of you that would suggest differently. Whereas in the stagnating stage, it's pretty obvious to others that you're no longer doing very well as a couple or a business partner. Um, it becomes pretty evident to other people. So it's really how others establish or how others observe it, the difference between circumscribing and stagnating. Once you get to the avoiding stage, it pretty much means that you're not even looking at each other or talking to each other. This might be a, an area if you're avoiding where you move out or you would just kind of stop talking to each other completely. And then terminating is where you do make, just like bonding, where it's an official commitment, this is where you make the official commitment to terminate the relationship, whether that be like a business partnership or whether that would be a romantic relationship in the form of divorce or a breakup.